In a previous video, we set up and configured a Proxmox backup server to back up our Proxmox server daily. And it's been a week. And uh, since then, I've actually unintentionally sort of uh, screwed up one of our containers. So in this video, we're going to actually roll that container back to a previously known good state. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So this is our Proxmox server. Uh, and then over here in the other tab, we've got our Proxmox backup server. Uh, it's easy to tell them apart because the Proxmox backup server is in light mode and the Proxmox server is in dark mode. So it'll be easy to tell those things apart as we're going through this. So if we come over to our backup server and go to backups here, uh, we can see that we've got two containers. And if we open up each of these containers, uh, we can see uh, the dates and times of each of those containers. And again, we've got this one right here that is protected. Uh, in fact, this is container number 100. And over here on our actual Proxmox server, uh, container 100 is the one that I screwed up. Um, sort of what I did was I converted it to a template um, and then realized after converting it to a template, I could no longer modify it or do anything with it. And that's... That's just not how I want my templates to work. So what I want to do is actually roll it back to a point where I can then uh, modify it as necessary and just kind of show you that. Like if I take a look at uh, my number 101 here, uh, I've got an option for console here. I've got different options. Whereas if I come over to here, uh, my console goes away. I can't start it. I can't do anything with it uh, other than clone it. And that's Again, that's not how I like my uh, templates to work. I want to be able to modify my templates as I go. Maybe I find something new that I want to add to my to my base template or I want to remove from a base template or whatever. Having it in this state doesn't allow us to modify it. So I want to roll it back to where I can modify it. So what I'm going to do is actually roll it back to the state it was when we left our last video. So what we're going to do in that case uh, is actually come over here and well, let's take a look at our, our backup server first here. Uh, we can see that our protected one, this is the one that we protected uh, during our, 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 our setup process of our backup server. We can see that that was uh, container number 100 and that was on May 24th at uh, 1802. So that's what we're looking for on our actual Proxmox server. So we jump back over to here. Uh, right here is uh, what we wanted to, want to take a look at. This is our, our template 100. And we want to come over to where it says backup right here. Um, and if we come over, we're not seeing anything right now. Uh, we've got an option to back up, but that's not super helpful. However, if we come over here to where it says storage and drop down and go to PVE BK, that's our uh, uh, Proxmox uh, virtual environment backup that we set up. Uh, we're going to connect to that version. And right here, uh, are all of the backups that are available. In fact, it's so handy here that it actually even says, hey, this is your protected one, and here are the notes that you left on it. So what we're gonna do, very, very simple, I'm just gonna click it, and I'm gonna click uh, Restore. And uh, my storage, I'm gonna select, I'm just gonna take a look here, I'm gonna leave this in storage, that's where it was. I'm not gonna have a bandwidth limit, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna start it after I restore it, that's fine. Uh, the privilege level, we're just gonna leave all of this as it is, and I'm gonna click Restore and this will permanently erase current VM data. I wish it said CT data, but you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, click yes. And here we can see it's going through the process of recovering and restoring uh, that particular instance. So we'll give this a minute. And then once it's done, we'll take a look at what our new options are. Okay, and here we are literally like 60 seconds later, maybe uh, it says task okay. So what we're gonna do is click the little X icon right there. And now if we take a look here, hey, look, we've got console access again. And if I right click it, I can start it or I can clone it or I can convert to a template or I can click console. And I didn't have that option when it was in, in, in template mode, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, and that, 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 that's it. Like that's how easy it is to restore a backup from your backup server to a previous known good state, uh, as long as you're aware of which, uh, which version of that backup you want to restore to. It's really just that easy. It took us less than a minute. And what's really cool about this is if you wanted to, you could actually take 
this backup that we just restored and back or, or restore it to a completely different uh, Proxmox node. If you wanted to, in my case, when I first started doing this before I set up uh, this whole video series, I actually moved all of my containers from one piece of hardware, I moved it to a different piece of hardware uh, so that I could use this piece of hardware for this video series. So um, that's it, like that, that, that's really how easy it is to restore a backup uh, once you've got a, a good backup solution in place. So I'm just gonna cut this video short because I don't need to ramble anymore and that's what I'm doing. So uh, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That helps me out more than you actually may realize. Uh, also, if you wanna support the channel, uh, you can do that in a multitude of different ways by doing things like subscribing, again, liking the video. Uh, there are are, uh, links in the description where if you wanted to, you could become a patron, you could join my TV, dbtech.fans. Uh, right below this uh, video, there's an option to become a member of the, the, the channel. Uh, all of those different support options, uh, minus the subscribe, all of the, the dbtech.fans, the Patreon, and the channel memberships will all give you early, when available, uh, ad-free uh, access to all of my available content. So uh, all of those are available. I do want to thank you guys for spending just a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.